Ladies and gentlemen, welcome everyone. I am Dr. Roland A. Drolet, PhD in Biomedical Engineering from the University of Toronto, 1971. I am the developer and inventor of the Rumart PEM system that has helped over one million people all over the world who were suffering from all kinds of health problems. Today I am with uh, my son, François Drolet, gold medalist, Olympic gold medalist in uh, Nagano, Japan, in short track speed skating. So uh, I'm pleased to uh, present this clip to you and this one is about the uh, rationalized MKS for meter kilogram second system of unit. This is the international scientific system of unit and there is what we call rationalized system and unrationalized but the difference between the two is just one constant. So what uh, I use and most scientific use, uh, most scientists use is the rationalized MKS system. Okay. So this shortly, I'm not going to go through each uh, to all an, uh, units, but briefly, I just want to mention the basic uh, measuring unit. This is the physical name of the unit, the symbol uh, when we talk about unit, rationalized rationalize MKS unit and here basic rationalize, rationalize MKS unit. So um, this uh, for example length when we place an equation just in terms of symbol uh, length is symbolized by L mass by M usually but I added AS for mass because M can be other things as well, okay? And I like AS for atomic spring because I talk a lot about atomic spring. Time T, charge Q, the electric charge. Um, then uh, you have the force F, uh, work is W as far as I'm concerned. Energy is often used U, but work, energy, it's the same unit really. So we call it joule, but energy, you add different kinds of energy. Joules can be translated to calories, for instance, mm -hmm. in, in a, a heat uh, system. Uh, we have uh, 4.18 joule is one calorie. One calorie being the energy necessary for to raise the temperature of one cubic centimeter or one gram of water at room temperature. To raise it from one degree, we call it one calorie. It happens to be experimentally 4.18 joule, which is the uh, normal unit. Okay. Uh, then you have power in watt, uh, charge density, um, rho, uh, rho Q because it's charge density Q for charge electric current I or small r current density uh, J in English electric field E uh, Einstein uses uh, often his equation uh, the most well known equation in science is E equal M C squared yeah. but I don't like the E in this equation because for me, E is the electric field, in, and so I use W for energy or work. Okay. And Einstein used E because he's mainly talking about MC square okay. in this. Uh, electric potential, we use V for volts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, polarization unit, it's Coulomb per square meter. Mm -hmm. So Coulomb is the rational MKS unit Coulomb. Okay, these are symbols for use for all kinds of unit, and this is the name in a rationalized MKS unit. Okay. So L stands for meter in length, 
mass is kilogram in MKS system, second, coulomb for the charge, Newton is the name of the force of Isaac Newton, this English physicist, okay? And one Newton in terms on N MKS unit, it's kilogram meter per second square from his famous equation, um, mass times acceleration. Mm -hmm. So that's the definition of the force in the unit. It's mass times acceleration, okay? So uh, that's called one Newton of force, okay? Uh, as far as uh, work is concerned, it's Joule, but Joule is the force multiplied by the distance. Okay, in, in physics, so you have the same unit as uh, the force multiplied by meter unit, so that's kilogram meter square second. Okay, this is interesting because when you have any equation from those you have seen yesterday, uh, you can actually uh, replace the units of each symbol in the equation and see that apple equals apple. Because if you don't use um, uh, the right units, then you have like apples uh, equal bananas. So that's, uh, that doesn't work to get the right answer, okay? Yeah. Now, charge density in MKS system is coulomb per cubic meter, charge density, okay? And uh, current in uh, MKS system is ampere, okay? Yeah. Uh, Current density, it's an ampere per square meter. It's a density. Uh, electric field, volt per meter, okay? Mm -hmm. Just remembering here that uh, the electric field across the excitable cell membrane is about seven million volt per meter, which is only 70 millivolts, but for one hundred of one millionth. Of meter. So the electric field in volt per meter is 7 million volts per meter. That's what drives your excitable cell membranes of human. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's why we are so uh, in fire sometimes. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, I just make a parenthesis there. One of the reasons we need to sleep at night is to let the time of the medium surrounding the nervous cell to um, be re-established to be able to maintain these discharges across okay. cell membrane, okay? So some people have done a PhD studying uh, why people need to sleep and one of them went depressive and he never found the answer. And the answer is this it's to replenish the medium around the cell, and this doesn't happen instantaneously. It is from the food you ate and that were digested, and it has to, be, to come to uh, a state where it can sustain discharges for eight, a whole day. But during the night, it's like we are recharging batteries, and that's an expression used by many people, okay? I keep on the, the units, but I like to make some example because th this is very important, really, to understand what we're talking about. Polarization, uh, displacement, uh, this is uh, um, defined here as the electric constant multiplied by the electric field, okay? Plus polarization, this is the definition of displacement, electric displacement. Okay. okay, E here is electric field. Polarization is in coulomb per square meter. Like number of coulomb you would have in a parallel plate capacitor. Uh, number of coulomb is uh, like the quantity of electric charge there. Okay, yeah. and uh, so if we keep on uh, quickly, the electric resistivity, okay, we call about electric resistance in ohm. But the resistivity is in ohm meter. Okay, this is the equation defining uh, resistance. is the integral of the resistivity over a certain distance divided by the surface. 
that makes the resistance in ohm. Okay. This is what uh, what was in the equation V equal R I, Ohm's law. Conductivity. This is in uh, the inverse of uh, resistivity. Okay, okay. Uh, it's uh, what mo per uh, meter. Okay, and mo is the excuse me. Mo is the inverse of ohm. Okay. okay? So this is why um, resistivity, uh, this is conductivity, is the inverse of resistivity, okay? Yeah. So it's one over the other, okay? Yeah. Electric resistance, uh, I just uh, talk about it here. Capacitance in farad. So farad is the unit of capacitance. What is, what is capacitance? It's the, the electric constant times the surface of a parallel plate capacitor divided by the distance between the plate. So these are very practical definition in vacuum epsilon zero. So the unit of capacitance is farad and magnetic flux is phi, okay? It's the summation of the magnetic field over the surface in the magnetic circuit. Magnetic induction B uh, is in Weber per square meter and uh, under the name who we'll first talk about uh, the, the scientists will first talk about it but most of the time people talk about magnetic field as B but scientifically it's H that is the magnetic field and B is rather the magnetic induction okay. so even scientists use B as magnetic field but uh, strictly speaking the magnetic field is H and it's in ampere turn per meter. Remember the NI formula of magnetics that you you said you were going to dream about? Well, that uh, <laughs> gets this one. And H here is defined by B, the magnetic induction, divided by uh, magnetic permittivity okay, of the vacuum minus M. Here is the magnetization. What is magnetization? It's this term that uh, it's like uh, the capacity of uh, material to build internal magnetic field that goes against the external field that you try to impose. So the magnetic field resultant is B over mu zero minus the magnetization of the material. Okay, so th these look a little complicated, but that's all the kinds of things that you need if you want to be coherent when you talk about everything in science. Mm -hmm. Inductance is in Henry, in the name of this guy, and uh, inductance is the little formula I explained earlier. Uh, magnetic permittivity multiplied by the surface of cross-section of the magnetic circuit n squared number of, ter of turns square and LM for the length of the magnetic circuit, okay? At the last page of this, uh, for this clip, we were talking about the MKS system of unit quite in detail, mm -hmm. uh, but this is the essential physical constant because there are physical constant, and I talk about a few of them, and <coughs> here these are, I <coughs> consider are the main one. The symbol here that you use, the Avogadro number, you remember, we talk yeah. about this, A for angstrom, this means 10 to the minus 10 meter, we call it an angstrom. So we have Planck's constant, its value, 10 to the minus 34. Joule second, okay. Boltzmann constant, we uh, showed how it is measured in yesterday's clip. Gas constant, uh, macroscopic gas constant. Uh, this is the uh, Avogadro number multiplied by Boltzmann constant, okay? okay? Here I did not place KB because in many texts they don't use it. Okay. The B, but I use a B because I have so many constants in what I'm talking. I have Boltzmann constant, elastic constant, and uh, so I like to use um, subgrid. So uh, this value of the macroscopic 
gas constant, 8.22, sometimes it says 8.31, I don't know why it's 32 there, but uh, it's slow. Avogadro number, we've seen it yesterday, 10 to the power 23 multiplied by 6 molecule per, per gram mole. Velocity of light, we saw it, as Armstrong unit, okay, it's uh, in meter, okay. But this is not a basic uh, unit of the MKS system, it's a derived unit. Out, okay? okay, because the basic unit of length is meter, kilogram second. Okay, okay. and but this is a very small unit. Uh, mu is used for uh, micron unit of length. Okay, about the size of one cell or many cells that are spherical. EV, it's uh, in joule per electron volt. So if you take one electron, you raise its electric potential by one volt, we call it one electron volt. This is a small energy unit, which is about 1.6 to uh, 10 to the minus 19 um, smaller than one joule, okay? Electron charge is 1.6, 10 to the minus uh, 19, yes, that's right, minus 19 Coulomb, and I've measured it in the Millikan experiment myself when I was in second year of uh, engineering physics, but okay. the, all the other students couldn't get it, but I did, so I'm very happy about that. I like Millikan for this, because it's a basic unit. Now, the mass of the proton, the mass of the electron, which when you know the charge of the electron, you deviate it in the magnetic field, and the way it is deviated, the radius of the curve gave you the ratio of charge to mass. So you know the charge, you can calculate the mass of the electron. So this is extremely small, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilogram. We're not talking about milligrams there. We're talking about uh, uh, 10 to the minus 28 uh, milligram. So th that's the electron. It's so light, it's it's crazy. And that is the same electron that gave the name to the internet. Email. When you talk about okay. email, okay. it's the electron moving. Really? Huh? You know, it, it, it's this uh, ridiculously small electron, but moving like hell. Okay. You know? okay? And uh, in one hydrogen atom, it um, its uh, speed, its velocity around the proton is about 137 the, the speed of light. And we 137 saw that. times the speed? No, no. 137 okay, okay. smaller. 137 okay. smaller than the speed of light. Okay. But it's still, it's still damn high. fast yeah, because yeah. you go to the moon in one second with the speed of light. So then it would take just one thirty to seven seven. It would take two minutes to the electron to go to the moon. Okay, so um, uh, epsilon zero. We talk about it. Uh, you see farad per meter, but we saw that it, it could be expressed in many basic unit. Mu zero, magnetic permittivity of vacuum. We saw this value. Here I added a new. Uh, essential constant related to the Romark system because okay. this is very important to understand what uh, people talk about because there are many PEMF systems. Companies uh, say all kinds of things but they, most of them they don't know what they're talking about scientifically. It's just marketing talk. Mm -hmm. you know? But in, in my case it's scientific talk. So the inductance of a MEXI 2A Inductance of Romart applicator, okay? Um, which is a general applicator. Which is the uh, the uh, maxi to weight, the large ring applicator, large ring, yeah. okay? Only one ring. It has the value of 1.07 10 to the minus 3 Henry or milli Henry, okay? okay? So it's precise. And uh, if we uh, use a formula, uh, to calculate the um, inductance of this coil, Romart coil, uh, Bruer 
basic electricity they both gave a formula to calculate the inductance when there is only one term of wear. Okay. Okay? Or a loop of wear. Okay. And then as a function of the radius of the of the turn, okay? Yeah. And the radius of the wear. So suppose you have a big wear yeah. and the electric current flows around the surface of the wear. Okay, because of the physics law. So you can calculate uh, the, with the uh, 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 Brewer's formula, which is this one, you can calculate the inductance if you have only one turn of wear as a function of the size of the wear. Okay, now if you uh, take the formula that I showed you that we use to calculate when there are many turns, in this case, you place n equal 1 and length of magnetic circuit uh, like this. You end up that actually uh, you will have uh, L will be equal to mu 0 in a magnetic permittivity times radius multiplied by this factor. Okay? So, and I have uh, calculated this, assuming that uh, for the radius of one ring, maxi ring, is 0.25 meter or 25 centimeter, uh, uh, centimeter the radius, okay? okay. Uh, that's uh, 50 um, uh, centimeter diameter. Number of turn, 29 turn, okay? okay. So uh, I assume that with the 29 turn, if you consider this like only one turn, it would be about 0.6 centimeter in radius. Okay. So just using the formula for one turn, uh, I realized that I get the right answer with this okay. uh, formula. So that's interesting. So I made a relation between this Brewer formula for one turn and the general for n turn. So uh, you won't find this anywhere because uh, I made it uh, okay. real. Okay, BM is the uh, what we call the Bohr magneton. This is the magnetic moment of the electron going. Let's say the electron going around a proton. It creates a magnetic moment perpendicular to this, and that's the value of this uh, uh, magnetic uh, moment in ampere square meter. It's 9.07, 10 to the minus 24. So it's very small. And the nuclear magneton, which is used in nuclear magnetic resonance system, for instance, for medical imaging, a nuclear magneton is defined as the Bohr magneton divided by 1840, which is the ratio between the mass of the proton and the mass of the electron. Because the mass of the proton is like the sun and the electron like the planet. Okay. The electron is uh, has about one th 2,000 times less mass than the proton. So that's why one goes around the other. If they would have the equivalent mass, both would be turning against the other, okay? And uh, G is the gravitational constant, uh, which is called um, uh, from Newton. And uh, its value in the equation, its numerical value is 6.67 10 to minus 11 in the MKS unit. And this has been measured in laboratory the, uh, by measuring the force between two bin mass, okay, and making sure that the electrical potential is the same. Because just a small electrical charge on it would have a force 10 to the power 32 stronger than the Newton's force. So okay. you have to make damn sure that the voltage is zero. So that's the end of this clip. Thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. And please keep smiling till the next clip.